Welcome everybody back into Nerd Sesh. As always, I'm Carson Brever and alongside me is Logan Camden. And today we have two very special guests with us as well. You'll know them from the Stay Hot podcast. You'll know them from their own work on TikTok. Theo Ash and Matthew Sponauer joining the show to do some head-to-head trivia with us. We're going to split up into two teams. This is something that we want to do throughout the summer bring different people on but very much appreciate you guys being our first guests very excited to have you how are we feeling today fellas feeling pretty good uh, i just want to let logan know though that uh before we started recording before you got here carson said that he oh, knew boy. more trivia than you oh, well i was prompted i that. was asked and you I were asked, asked honestly uh, i just want to uh, let you know that me and Spawn Hour will be uh, thoroughly spanking you and Theo in today's uh, <laughs> competition. Okay, uh, that is a that's a false rumor. Okay, best of luck to you. So those are going to be the teams. It's going to be me and Theo versus Logan and Matthew. I think should we come up with some team names? Theo, thoughts? What should we be? I think uh, uh, some combination of stay hot and nerd sesh. Maybe hot nerds perhaps yeah, i like that i actually love that i think we should Where just be like that? i think we should just be like team paul george for like brandon miller man because paul george is the greatest <laughs> basketball player whoever how lives. about it man that's what i'll love it that's what i need I'll... right now it's you need right. the hornets to be in the 2024 nba finals fun hour hey man <laughs> i can see it happening i see the path <laughs> i see the vision all right well team paul george will actually start with a question Along those exact lines, because you mentioned, well, first of all, I guess I should explain how this is going to go in terms of (laughs) format. We're going to do 12 questions for each team. You guys will have one hint that you can request per question. And Logan and I have come up with these. So we will be the hint masters and whatnot. But the first question is not only Hornets related, it is Brandon Miller related because he was obviously just selected second overall by the Hornets. Team Paul George, can you name their six other top five picks since their inception as the Bobcats? The Hornets? Yes. Okay. Let's think. The toughest one here is going to be Tyrus Thomas. I know he's a top five pick. There you Um, go. It's not Tyrus Thomas. (laughs) Tyrus Thomas wasn't taken top five. Air. I just took your word for it. I'm not going to lie. Tyrus Thomas was, but he was taken by the Bulls. He went to Charlotte later. Well, let's think. Spino, Larry, was, Cody, was Cody Zeller a top pick? Cody Zeller was picked fourth overall. That is correct in 2013. You said there's five others outside of Brandon Miller, correct? No, okay, there's well, five remaining still. Five remaining still. Okay. Well, you have LaMelo, obviously. Yep. Larry Johnson. That is... So, oh, oh you mean you mean since, since the Bobcats? Okay. So, but correct, obviously for the for the original the Charlotte Hornets. Right. Oh man, I'm trying to think. Kimbo so went Okafor, nine. Was Emeka Oka for a top five? Yeah, Emeka Oka four is up there. Number two, he was picked. Oh, uh, Michael Kidd Gilchrist, of course. Yep. Is- Oh, was was Marvin Williams drafted by the Hawks or the Hornets, man? Or do I just remember him with the Hornets? I don't. I don't think he was a. Yeah, he was drafted so. yeah, yeah, yeah. by the Hawks. He joined the Hornets much later. So, well, I guess I'm just so used to offering Logan up hints, but you guys haven't. Requested no, no, go ahead. Feel free. Feel free. Throw yeah. them at me, buddy. Okay, you have an all-time bust here. Oh, 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 Adam Morrison, right? He was mm-hmm. third. Yeah. Good pull, my boy. And just one to go from that same era very early in the Bobcats history. On our when was Raymond Felton drafted? I must I don't think he started his career with Charlotte, did he? <clears throat> That's correct. Did he? It's Is Raymond, it Raymond Felton. Felton. Really? Yeah. Dang. Raymond Felton, two thousand five, was picked fifth overall. Nicely done, fellas. You're you on the board. Play. Nice. Okay. Was Kaminsky was Kaminsky picked by the Hornets in the he lottery? Was, yeah, yeah, he was picked, and it was in the lottery. I think you're probably thinking that's the famous like they got offered a ton of picks because somebody wanted Winslow and they didn't take it. 
Yeah. Okay. Kaminsky was nine. So he was a top. There's a bunch of other top 10 picks. I mean, they've picked in the top 10, frankly, almost every they year. Pick, I mean, I'm sure there's 20 at nine, man. They always pick yeah. at nine, dude. They do. Surely the roster is looking good by now. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> it's next that time se- this year. Next season, Hornets 2024 NBA Finals champions. Uh, 50 wins. Maybe 30. Okay. We'll see. They'll get more than 30 wins. You have my word. Okay. 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 Are you, has, has the Brandon Miller pick grown on you at all? Cause I know that you were a big scoot over him guy. I mean, here's the thing. It's like, I don't want to be too negative because I do think Brandon Miller's like a good player. This isn't some situation where it was like scoot or a horrible like bust yeah. or whatever, but uh, I, I still feel like we should have taken scoot. Although my thing is, is that if they end up bringing everybody, I think they're going to bring back back. I kind of think they're going to be pretty decent regardless and surprise a lot of people. So it's not the end of the world. I'm a big Brandon Miller guy. I think he's going to be a star. I think he's got real versatile impact on both ends of the floor. I think he fits anywhere. And I think his archetype is just a bit more valuable than Scoot. We talked about this on our draft show with Jason Temp and uh, we had this guy named Colin Cowherd on, but Jason's spiel was about wow, how, like, flexing on us like that. Okay. Oh, well, I was just mentioning <laughs> who we had on the show, Theo. I would say the same thing about you guys. Uh, just the explosive athletic downhill guard archetype of all the like star molds has historically been the least successful. You look at modern NBA history, like the D roses, the Russes, the John walls, the John Morant's as of now, not always the most cohesive to winning basketball, the wings who can play on or off ball at a high level. Brandon Miller has playmaking chops, multi-positional defender. There's a real, right, right, there right, right. Real, real star <laughs> ceiling. So I'll sell you on him. Cause I think it was the right pick. And I know Logan did too, but all right, Logan, what do you got for us? Uh, okay. Gentlemen, pretty simple to start out for you guys. Can you guys name every 5,000 yard passer in NFL history? Sing, Bre- do Breeze has done it a million times. Yeah. I did her, did Herbert throw for over five thousand? Or Herbert was that it. throwing and rushing combined? Okay. Rodgers never did it. Times, I know. Brady's done it twice. Mahomes has done it twice. Staff Peyton had to have done it. Mm-hmm. Peyton has the record, five thousand four hundred and seventy seven in twenty thirteen. And I think we're only missing one, right? Oh, three. You're missing three. Did uh, Marino Jameis. do it way before everyone yes, else? Sir. He did. He was the first one. And then Jameis and Ben, right? Is that it? Kaboom. That's all of them. Nice. <sighs> Look at us. Look at us, Theo. Okay. Dang. Along those same lines, we have a multiple choice one for you guys here. One of these players has a 4,000 yard passing season in his career. Who was it? Was it A, Case Keenum? B, Blake Bortles, C, Ryan Fitzpatrick, or D, Matt Hasselback. Oh, I don't know. Say those names I, I one more time. I hate to be that guy. A, Case Keenum, B, Blake Bortles, C, Ryan Fitzpatrick, D, Matt Hasselback. My gut is leaning Bortles. Not that that's our final answer. Sure. No, no, no. Bortles, Bortles, um, he he threw the ball a decent amount. I remember like he was really slinging it like early in his career, mm-hmm. like maybe like his second season I could have seen him because I remember he had like a ton of interceptions. And and my first thought is that maybe if you have that many interceptions, you have enough passes to get to 4K. He also had 35 tutties or something like that that year. Yeah, and- there was a point in time where it was like, if Bortles can clean up the interceptions, mm-hmm. he'll be <laughs> quite nice. And it didn't turn out like that. I wonder if Carson threw him in there, though, because Carson knows I have a weird – uh, affinity for He's trying Blake to get you i don't think it's matt hasselbeck kind of guy. I, I i don't think matt hasselbeck ever surpassed 4k i don't know if it's patrick ever played enough in one season to hit it didn't he he had that full season for the jets yeah. i'm also waiting like playing more recently pretty strongly just because of you know like playing in the 2000s and playing in 2015 or whatever but i don't know if he got the four thousand yards a year and who was the other guy Case Case Keenum 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 had like a really good year with the Vikings, Mm -hmm. didn't he? But I feel like if I remember correctly, they were, they had like Bradford in for a couple of games. I don't know if he got to 4k that year, but I think it'd be between Keenum and Bortles for me. 
I'm I'm with you, dude. It's fine. I'm leading. I'm leading my. Uh, I'm leading my guy Blake Bortles, man. What about you? All right, all right. I, I can roll with Blake Bortles. That is correct. Almost outthought yourself there, Logan. I was actually nervous <laughs> because of your Blake Bortles fascination that it was going to be too easy having him there. Over 4,400 yards in his second wow. season. And you guys mentioned 35 touchdowns, 18 picks. So well done, gentlemen. Two for two. Just wait on it, guys. I'm sure he's a franchise quarterback. <laughs> okay. He's a Packer, Packer legend, Blake Bortles. <laughs> Who remembers? I th- would have guessed Ryan Fitzpatrick. So you guys are smarter than me. And he got, th- I'm looking at him now. He had 3,900. So mm-hmm. that was a, that was a tricky one to throw in there. Yeah. Carson. I'm now, impressed of, that you guys got it. No, all of the guys under 4,000 were close. They all got up close to like 3,900, but Bortles had that one season where he cleared it by a good bit. So well done boys. All right. Another uh, career question here for you guys. Uh, can you name, the five players with the most turnovers in NBA history. Sure. LeBron has got to be up there just because he's played so long, correct? LeBron is, is number one. Yeah. Not wow. my goat, you know? <laughs> is uh, Jason Kidd here? Kidd is the first guy off. He is sixth. Damn. I know that we've done this at some point, I feel like. Okay. Go ahead, guess George McGinnis. I know you want to. I uh, single season George <laughs> McGinnis had it until 2017. I can tell you that. I'm thinking, you know, some bigs have more turnovers than you think, but yeah, you got to have a lot of longevity. I mean, Russ's per game numbers are ridiculous. Is he there at this point? Westbrook is number three. Is Harden? I was going to guess Westbrook. Harden's a good guess. He's number eight. Okay. Why am I tempted to guess? Longevity. Tim Duncan was too fundamentally sound. He can't be up there. Is he? I don't think he would be. Okay. That's a good guess. I'm thinking about Akeem. Uh, How close is he? Akeem is 10. You guys guys are dotting around right now. All, All these guys played for a long time. What about Michael Jordan? Oh. Come on, Theo. Come on, Theo. Is he way low? I don't know. He, he, you know, retired like 20 times or whatever. And well, he was perfect in a lot of his career. Yeah. So it's, he actually uh, never did anything. Wrong. <laughs> zero career turnovers. They actually have him with zero career turnovers. I'm thinking Nash because of sheer longevity. Is he here? Nash is a really good guess. He's 15. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I mean, Stockton played forever, but he was so efficient. Hmm. Is he still? Is here? Chris Paul? Stockton's fourth. Chris Paul is a good guess. Wow, Chris Paul, stupid efficient. Where he's thirty second. He's right behind MJ. Yeah. That's actually crazy. Yeah, he's, he's so like good. he's like just over two turnovers a game in his career. Is oh uh, Carl Malone here? Number two. Okay. Nice. So all you guys are missing is number five. Just missing five. <sighs> I'm thinking. See, the thing with Kareem is they didn't track turnovers until 73, 74. So he's That's a good missing note. a couple years there. Who else played obscenely long in a high volume role? Mm-hmm. Kev- Kevin Garnett? Garnett's not a bad guess. He's yeah, that's pretty high up here. Spot. He's top 25. It's not okay. Kobe, is it? It's Kobe. Uh, yeah. Oh, good call, Carson. Yeah. All right. There we go. Both of us two for two. Okay. Team Paul George. DeAndre Hopkins may yet find a new home this offseason, but his career up to this point has been filled with quarterbacks walking in and out the door. Can you name every primary starting quarterback he's had so far? That being whoever started the most games for his team that season. Tyler. Yep. Us too. Um, do we get some Matt Schaub crossover with the hub? That's what I was going to think. His rookie year, Schaub and Case Keenum both started eight games, so either one would be acceptable. Keenum doesn't have any other years with the Texans. No. Uh, did did Osweiler become Brock a Osweiler primary? 2016. 
man, what about other obscure Texans? Like, is Brian Hoyer here? 2015. <laughs> wow. What about, so when uh, did – okay. I'm trying to think of what years we're missing. You guys are Not, clearly doing some conscientious objection to one guy, which I respect. Mm, yeah. But I don't want – Oh. We know who it is. I didn't even well, think about that, man. That just didn't even cross my mind. So to me, it feels like just, Hopkins got traded a million years ago, dude. Yeah, just the last How two. many are we missing? Just two guys now. This is a weird guess. Is TJ Yates here? Ah, uh, not TJ Yates. But I love, I love that. I love, I love some TJ Yates. Yates? Um, yeah, started two games in 2015 and three games in 2017. Uh, oh, no, 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 it's not. I was going to say Tom Savage. It's not going to be Tom Savage, is it? Uh, it is actually, Logan. What? He started is... seven games wow. in 2017. Remember, Deshaun had that crazy start, but he only played six games. Right. Oh, yeah. Tom I would have never, ever gotten that. <laughs> and so Nicolas Cage was out there slinging that rock. <laughs> um, One to go. One to go. 2014 is the year you guys are missing. So after Schaub for the Texans. Yep. Give me a, just to, just to like, give me a ballpark. What year was Brock? 2016. And you guys do still have a hint if you want it. I'm not counting just giving you the year as a hint. Okay. Too proud though. I respect it. (laughs) Speaking of uh, Brian Hoyer, I just learned that he was still in the league on the on the yeah. Raiders, and they yeah. posted his picture. Like they posted yeah, the dude. three, <laughs> the three quarterbacks, which is Aiden O'Connell out of Purdue, and then uh, obviously Garoppolo and Hoyer. And Hoyer looks so terrible and old yeah. in his picture. It's like the f- nice camera, full HD, and it like he just looks so unhappy to be there it's like let him go home man let him go Dude, home he looked like a dead man walking i saw that <laughs> as well it was really a jump scare funny man they're yeah. building like the 2015 patriots dude it's sick that's all <laughs> that's all mcdaniels can do is mm-hmm. like the patriots are the only people that like me so i can only sign patriots but anyway enough stalling um yeah i you want I don't, this is this guy is a real journeyman, like is a it, signature journeyman of oh, this century. It, is it Fitzpatrick? It's Ryan My Fitzpatrick. Man. Good work, fellas. Dude, this is a this is a really nice uh flow here because I have a wide out QB question for you guys. Okay. So can you guys name every quarterback to throw Devontae Adams a touchdown? Oh, hell yeah. I assume that I go. can. Well, Rogers, obviously, and Carr and Stidham. Yeah, so you just got one to go, actually. Oh wow! Well, uh, then it would probably be. Is it Huntley? Love? Clean sweep. Good job, yeah, guys. I thought you guys were going to struggle with that one a little more. Nah. Well, Rogers and Carr are easy, and then it's just Stidham and and Hundley. Stidham, Look such a Theo. bum. He's got all green and yellow on today. He was always going to walk through that one. All right. Matthew, this one uh, is to another one of your your signature, not teams, but people. Can you guys name LeBron's highest and lowest scoring playoff series ever? Highest scoring? That's a tough one. There's a lowest, few that could be there. There's so much it's, greatness, right? It's either – well, that's, that's the thing. It's <laughs> like I've – it might be easy to say – 2018 finals mm-hmm. because he put up 50 early but i don't know if he ever got to 40 points a game in a single series so immediately i'd go 2009 versus orlando would be I my like that. i like that right I've... on the money dude 38 wow. and a half points per game all right now go 19.4 2011 nba finals well that's the right series you did not have the exact it? number jutsu it's 17.8 but well done, boys. Nice. LeBron was sub-18 a night. Not my goat. Not my goat. Not my goat. <laughs> you won't believe it. They started calling him the frozen one after that. That's pretty good. 
they they cooked with that. <laughs> he was getting That's clamped a by Bayless Sean classic. Stevenson, man. It happens, man. <laughs> well, does it? It happened. Apparently, if it yeah, happened, yeah, the best yeah, player ever. Well, second. Okay, Logan. What you <laughs> All got? right, gentlemen. Three players have led the NBA in total offensive rebounding six or more times. Can you name them all? I'm here to get the easy ones. So Rodman. Boom. That's one of them. Moses. That's two of them. Andre Drummond. Wow. Clean yeah, been, that would have been back to back. You guys are freaking disgusting. <laughs> Let's go, Theo. And uh, Drummond, Drummond killed it. He used to miss his own shots and just get him right back a hundred <laughs> times on those yeah. Detroit teams. That's what Moses did too, by the way. He was just actually better. But that's why it's funny to me when people talk about like Moses is the most underappreciated star ever. And I'm like, based on resume, sure, three time MVP, like incredible dominant finals run in 83. But I find beauty in like every basketball player in terms of stars. I love watching so many different styles. Moses is by far the least fun player to watch ever. I was watching some <laughs> Moses the other day and it's literally just like putbacks. It's like basic low post stuff and putbacks. So that's an interesting. I feel about guess. Jordan. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, hold on a second. <laughs> Don't push your luck, buddy. I, I watch one game. I'm miserable, man. I, I have to turn it off. <laughs> Just too brutally dominant from everyone on the floor. Yeah, I get that. Okay. <laughs> this is going to be a Logan special. Uh, Matthew, you might just have to enjoy the best seat in the house on this one. Three quarterbacks started at least one game for the 3-13 and 13 2007 Rams. Can you <laughs> name them all? Uh, is Keith Null one of them? No. <laughs> Who is no. that? Yeah, never... <laughs> This uh, entire thing is just going to be fun to watch. Keith Knoll started four games for the 09 Rams, mm. who were is, one in fifteen. Uh, is Mark Bulger here? Bulger is the primary guy. Yes. Is Gus Ferrat one of the Gus other ones? Gus Ferrat is here. That's correct. Bulger um, started twelve. Garat started three. Now you have one guy left. Started one game, and this was his only career start, by the way. Uh, Craig Knoll. No, you can't just guess guys with the last name. No, yeah. that's unfortunately uh, going to prove un uneffective. Rusty Smith? No. He's trying to throw you off, Logan. Keep guessing that last name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it, Jeff is, it, is it Kellen Clemens? It's not Kellen Clemens. No, actually, Logan. Clemens was drafted 07 by the Jets. One career start for this guy. Think about it. This was it. This was his moment. For the record, I have no clue. I, I, <laughs> no, you're not I don't supposed know what type to. Type of question this is, man. The actual quarterback who he is referring to must be like, "Oh, that did happen to me." <laughs> yeah. Like, Holy shit. Okay, oh, I, that's right. I did start that game. I played in the NFL. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to burn one. What's uh? Can you give me a hint on this guy? Sure can. Uh, I'll give you his college. I think that's a good one, probably. Miami, but he started at Florida actually, so he played for both. Brock Berlin? Yeah, you... Let's go! Yes, Brock Berlin. Never heard of any of those names ever, man. <laughs> do you just grind the, like, old depth charts or where you just a Madden fiend? Yeah, how do you possibly... As, like, oh, no, I was, I was the biggest Madden fiend, buddy. Okay. Um... <laughs> That's always kind of what I assumed, is, like, these feel like Madden quarterback, like, mm -hmm. pouring over the depth chart. Bro, 50 Hyper obsessively. Overalls straight up dude logan was a, a devoted gamer by four years old apparently apparently so because that's he was that is after, very impressive after the uh after the simpsons hit run came out man i was hooked uh all right <laughs> gentlemen i'm going back to the well one more time what green bay packers wide receiver leads the franchise in career touchdowns well driver leads it in yards is does he lead it in touchdowns as well he does not. Driver is fifth in touchdowns. Wow. Is it, uh, could it be the great Don Hudson? Good pull, dude. It is Don Hudson. So That's criminally nice underrated, bro. 99 TDs. After all these years. Yeah, that is really crazy that he's, he's still on top after Sterling Shepard or Sterling Shepard. Oh my God. <laughs> Sterling, <laughs> Sh Sterling Sharp and Devante and Jordy and all them. But yeah, still Don Hudson. Wow. Yeah, I was actually looking at Don Hudson's numbers just the other day because I was thinking about Otto Graham. Cheater. 
And I was like, you know who was really ahead of their time? Forget Otto Graham, Don Hudson, 17 touchdowns, 1,200 yards in 1935 or something. What a beast. Okay. Matthew, we're going to hit you in uh, one of your zones as well. We'll see how much you really love that state of Ohio of yours. Can you guys name me the top five NBA scorers since 2000 who were born in Ohio? LeBron James. <laughs> yeah, number one. Steph Curry. Number two. I did not know that about Steph. Same yeah. hospital. Mm hmm. Oh, wow. You don't, know that? you don't know that little fact? Wow, the script, they really were cooking with that <laughs> one when they, they gave, <laughs> when they gave Dell and, and his wife the script. <laughs> All right, you're going to have to go to this hospital. I don't and focus know. Focus on the I threes. I don't, I don't keep track of where NBA players are from state wise. So I feel mm -hmm. like. Uh, it's, I don't. I don't know if he was born. Mike Conley. I don't know, I don't know if he was born. He was probably born. No. I don't know about Ohio. <laughs> Mike Conley was born. He was uh, born in Arkansas, actually. This o this Ohio State hospital where where amazing happens, bro. Seriously, Ohio State. Interesting. That might help you for one of these guys. The next three are obviously significantly harder. I mean, I'm I'm thinking about you're saying you're so you're saying that one of these guys went to Ohio State. I'm trying to think of like NBA players who went to Ohio State. Sullinger, Evan Turner. I mean, D'Angelo Russell is probably the number one guy I can think of who would have played long enough to score any amount of serious points. But a little earlier, a little further back, little earlier. Oh, of course, it's NBA legend Greg Oden. No. Oh. Right, that's 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 where my mind went next. Poor Greg. No, earlier even than him. I wrote a. I don't know why I'm about to share this, but I wrote a, a brief rap about Greg Oden a few months ago because I saw a video of him, and he was walking down the street. He had his headphones in, and some kindly old lady came up to him and said, "Like, do you play basketball?" And then he was like, "I used to," and he gave her a very nice, warm smile, and then she turned away and immediately he just looked like he was in anguish. And I think it was set to like some super sad song. Maybe it was Stan. So then I was like, we need to commemorate the career of Greg Oden through the power of song. If I played a, if I played a Pierre born type beat, would you give us a little snippet? No. <laughs> okay. Well, actually I'll, I, you know, maybe I will. It started with uh Greg Oden. Your career was stolen by your knees. <laughs> Okay. It uh, referred to the hold Blazers on, hold on. record. Hold up, I don't have the lyrics. There's the intro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, shout out Greg Oden. Yeah. Shout out Greg Oden. Yeah. Greg Oden, your career was stolen by your knees. God, please. Give him another chance to prance around, man. He was so gifted when he was healthy. The Blazers stayed winning. And then I forget how the rest of it goes. But then I can see their good. record when <laughs> he was on the court. Together, man. I, I see it. Thanks, this should be your intro. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Just clip that. Right. Any progress on that question? Dude, no. <laughs> Zero. Dude, no, this is... This might I'm gonna be say this it. is this probably is bullshit, the hardest man. one. <laughs> oh yeah, this is the hardest one. We're talking about like who were like these 2007 starters for the Rams, and then you guys are like who scored the most touchdowns for the Packers? <laughs> Dude, that's okay. First of all, I only asked Logan that because I knew he could get it. Uh -huh. uh, that is easier for him than this, believe it or not. Who yeah, played actually. for Ohio State in the early 2000s? He was like Logan, before. You should know this because I've said this before. I mean, I'm just thinking about Arkansas legend second round Corliss pick Williamson right now. I, I mean, I, I I've got a total blank here, and I feel like we still got three to go, right? And dude, like there's two more <laughs> after this, and they were born in Ohio. I have no clue which players were born okay, in Ohio. Yeah, all right. We we need some hints, bro. So the guy who went to Ohio State was a second round pick turned all star. The other two, one of them is, I would say, among the best players to uh, not ever make an all-star team. 
another underdog story. And the last guy had a rule changed because of him in the Kevin NBA. Martin. Kevin Martin. What about That's the rip through for those of you who don't know? Jamal Crawford? No. I'm trying to make uh, one of the best players to never be an all star. Is it, uh, was Lamar Odom ever an all star? Lamar Odom? It's not Lamar Odom. That uh, would be New York's own. I know he's your boy. He is. What about Elton Brand? I think Brand no. was like a two time all star. Yeah. Yeah. It's Maybe an active it guy. He went to a oh, small school. Is it CJ McCollum? Oh, it's CJ McCollum. I had no okay. clue he was from Ohio. Ohio the State, last bro. Guy. Ohio State second round pick to All Star. Made an All Star game. Dude, I, I don't know how I can't get this. You can believe in yourself, Spawn Hour. <laughs> I will. He's trying. Um, okay, Lars, I hate asking for another one. Can you tell me what year he was drafted in? 2000. Oh, what a doo doo draft class, man. A multi time All Star. No, just a one time All Star. Okay. But he could have been a multi-time all-star. He was legitimately very consistently good, very gifted scorer of the basketball, one-time All-NBA. Yeah, bug is. It's going to be awesome to learn who this is, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think you guys want to give it I, I don't think i got it man mm -mm. all right it's michael red oh yeah that's a tough one again those I think... those hints those hints were perfect though bro. well that i was saying that was the toughest one the next one i have is actually uh pretty absurd but <laughs> uh, this one not that absurd i expect you guys to eat this up uh really easily carson probably in sub five seconds <laughs> Carson, can you name the uh, Carson or Theo? But I know Carson's going to know this off rip. Can you guys name the only player in NBA history to lead the ABA and NBA in points per game? Hold on, let me let me try to get a crack at this. Yeah, Is it? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't. I don't know the ABA. Is, is it? Was Doctor J in the ABA? Yes, he was. Virginia Squires legend. Uh, it's not Doctor J though. He did That's lead the. I guess. Did lead the ABA. Okay. Didn't lead the NBA. It's. Uh, oh, I wow. do know it. I do know it, but Theo, you keep guessing for a little bit. I read one chapter of a book about the ABA, and I'm like racking my brain trying it, to figure out. Was it Loose Balls? Was that the no, name of the book? No, no, no. It That's was an ABA book. It wasn't about the ABA. It was just about like basketball in a general sense, and it talked about the ABA for a while. Was it that tall ass? Is it a tall ass dude? Like really tall? Not so like, it... not like scary tall. I mean, he's tall. Not like, like a big. Okay. Probably like, probably like average NBA height. Okay. He's Caucasian. Mm -hmm. Very true. Uh, is it Pistol Pete? I not Pistol Pete. Good guess though. Pistol Pete was uh, picked by the Carolina Cougars of the ABA. White guy from a long time ago. Played in both leagues. NBA legend. He for a time and played ABA with a legend. I still don't believe that. That can't be real, man. <laughs> he has like a million children. Also, can you get him in contact with me? I'd really love to explore my options. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bad toupee. What's it? I think I was thinking of McCon. George McCon is the tall guy, but it's it's not him. M Mikan McCon. George Mikan. Mike going with an yeah. alternate pronunciation, sort of a, a yeah. pecan pecan type deal. Pecan, yes, yes. I've only seen it spelled out. No one talks about him except for probably you guys because he probably has a bunch of records. Carson literally brought him up last episode. Last episode. Yeah, that sounds about right. That sounds and by about the way, right. It was in reference to autogram. I was applying something called the Mikan rule that I just came up with for myself to uh, autogram all-time ranking so that's the sort of stuff we're doing here you want me to just yeah blurt it out what is it oh yes of course yeah okay Berry. Uh, guys i legitimately apologize for this one this is gonna be a straight <laughs> guess but it is i thought it was hilarious and so i will be asking it 
Which of these legendary DBs never had a 10 interception season? Was it Otto Schnellenbacher? <laughs> <laughs> Was it Goose Gonsolin? Are we talking about the German league? Are we talking about <laughs> Euro football We're Europe? Talking about the 1950s and 60s. Was it Dick Westmoreland? Or was it Bibbles Bowell? <laughs> I'm leaning oh, Bibbles. I, I think. No, Bibbles was clamped, dude. That guy was a legend. Well, here, here, Take here. It. Okay. Let's, let's, here, here's how I'm going to think about it. So, Carson obviously wanted to pick four really silly names, right? So, I, I think it's possible that the silliest of those four names was just included for the sake of you know getting another funny name in there whereas the other three had to have also had 10 interceptions which is really tough so i think you go with the funniest name here and hope that's what happened lawless logic i, I will also lock in bibbles i'm with that let's go that is correct bang that I'm is some you. excellent reasoning there from matthew spawn hour Good what were those balance. what were those names again? Bibbles. Oh, you're thinking of Otto Schnellenbacher, Goose Gonsolin, Dick Westmoreland, and Bibbles Bowell. It's real fantasy football considering this <laughs> league takes place in the Hansel and Gretel universe, I suppose. <laughs> and by the way, Bibbles was actually Clamps. Brief career, but a brilliant one. Eight picks as a rookie. Then he went away for two years. I'm wondering if it was to the Korean War before coming back <laughs> to have nine picks and two pick sixes in his next Nine season. picks don't move me. I've got to see the EPA per per target and coverage yeah. rep before I'm willing to anoint um, Bibbles as any kind of shutdown corner. It could have been a Trayvon Diggs situation. Mm -hmm. it's Player funny. comp, Bibbles, <laughs> whatever his last <laughs> name is. That would be is. a great thing to do for your draft reviews next year. <laughs> Comp exclusive player comp and then like 1950s players that would be awesome that's a good idea okay gentlemen uh i need one of you guys to, to slip up so we can keep pace here uh mm -hmm. but i need you all to name the top five non-offensive touchdown scores in nfl Ooh. history jj watt first guess i i love that so much um it's it's not correct unfortunately but i love the enthusiasm uh, i think Two of the top five for sure will be Dion and Rod Woodson. Is that correct? And Devin Hester. So, wow, top three. And that's gonna I piss saw a stat, Dion off, isn't it? I saw a stat that Vrabel has more career pass or receiving touchdowns than anybody on the Titans roster right now. So let wow. me get a mic of Vrabel. Well, except Vrabels are offensive. Because well, he's catching yeah. them for it's not like it's not right. no offensive players, yeah. But it's okay, okay, it's okay. I see what you're teams saying. And defensive touchdowns, yeah. Like, Rabel does okay. have like 11 receiving it's, touchdowns. It's absurd. So does, so does Watt because they brought him in, he was second in mm -hmm. MVP voting in 2014 to Rodgers because yeah. they have him play like they were throwing him fades on the goal line. So that's immediately where my head went with Vrabel and Watt. But in terms of pick sixes and fumbles and all that, I'm thinking. It's got to be some return, man. I don't Cordero? think Josh Cordero? Cribbs is here. Cordero's not a bad guess. Do you say Josh Cribbs? Yeah. Cribbs is tied for 14th. It's a really good guess. Cordero tied for 23rd with nine TDs. The mark to get on here is 13. Uh, you've got six guys tied at five, and you've got one gentleman alone at four with 14. So who have we guessed already? Rod Woodson, Deion Sanders, and Devin Hester? Yep. Yes, sir. Okay. Who would be the all-time picks leader? Come Is... Cromarty. Antonio Cromarty had so many picks. How many of those did he house? I like that guess a lot. That's an intuitive one. Too. Along those lines, I'm thinking Night Train Lane. Did he? Yeah, run that would have been my my first guess. Cromarty tied for 81st with six. Let's see where Night Train Lane is. Just a bit outside. <laughs> Night Train Lane tied for 57th with seven. Damn. So you, you, I'm assuming there's got to be some more returners in here. Yeah, there's actually no. I mean, there's one. There's one guy who was multifaceted. Uh, his team used him in a lot of different ways, uh, but only like one legitimate returner left, or two, excuse me. But you think of that guy more as a, a dominant corner too. I don't know if this is true, but Troy Polamalu just seemed he would have a bunch of 
like touchdowns for whatever reason. Oh, I do. I love. I, I love this. I love the Steelers. Love only five return TDs for Troy. Yeah. Okay. One I'm, of these guys. One of the biggest play like safety of all time. Is it Reed? Ed Reed is tied for fifth. Correct. Yeah. So you guys are oh, just missing number. That would have been my next guess after Palomalo. It seems like one of those two could have been on there. Number He's, four. So this guy was a returner. He was not a returner. Um, oh, I was referring yeah. to the gentleman tied for fifth. So tied for fifth. you've got Brian Mitchell, Lamar Parrish, Darren Sharper, Aeneas Williams, and Charles Woodson all tied for fifth. Just Brian Mitchell was the name I was I was trying to pull. I was thinking about the all time I should have guessed Charles Woodson. Um, and you said Rod Woodson. So I'm just thinking about the all time interception leaders. I'm thinking about Paul Krause, Lester Hayes. Either of them. I went to high school no. with Paul Krause's grandson. No Fun kidding. Fact. Krause Minnesota. has six. Six. See. Yeah, Let, that's a lot, dude. That means you're uh, you're dynamic. Lester you're Hayes, 14. five. They're good guesses. You know what, though, man? I, I don't know. It's it's weird. I actually don't really think of this guy as one of the most dynamic. He, he played for, for a long time. Um, oh, is it Daryl Green? Daryl Green's an intuitive guess. It's not Daryl Green, though. Green I'm looking is... at the list right now. It's not Janoris Jenkins is incredibly high on here. Really? <laughs> yeah, and Jack also they Rabbit. have his name listed as Jack Rabbit Jenkins. So. He officially changed it. Did he? I, I didn't yeah, know that. I thought it was Jack Jack Rabbit Jenkins. Yeah, that's so sick. Having Jack Rabbit and Snacks on the same defense <laughs> at the same time was a real moment in history. Do you okay. remember freshman year, guys, when um, Ben Bullock went around the dorms like day one and formed like a cult based on Prince Amukamara? Prince Amukamara. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking wow. of random mid two thousand tens corners, with I was I was in that pack that, that uh, traversed Taylor Blake. <laughs> you were, so you were I, there. Dude. We were going door to door like Jehovah's Witnesses, but our... yes, you were. Our prophet was Prince of Mukumara. That's right. All right. Let's dial in, Theo. Let's get this. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, Lay... Prince of Mukumara is not number four. I don't think. <laughs> um... Played for a long time. Do we do we have a hint beyond that? You do have a hint. I can let's give it to you. Let's cash it in. Hmm. Don't give him a good one. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying the face to, I'm of trying a man to... who definitely has a hint in his yeah, yeah. Of one what right are we now. doing here <laughs> I, I want to give it to you but I don't want to just walk you guys to it because I feel like if I give his college I feel like that might give it away um, this guy played on one of the greatest defenses of all time that's a good one okay so I'm thinking 85 Bears I'm thinking 2000 Ravens but we already got Reed 85 oh bears. champ is it champ bailey champ bailey's a, a really good guess actually that is a good um, guess champ was they a can... beast it, it, or Ronda... maybe the 2002 uh the bucks was it could it could be um... oh is it ronde it's ronde it's ronde bar there we go Theo. yeah nicely done good shit you guys all right well thank you that was a helpful hint Okay. My other hint. Hold on. I just want to know if I yeah. had said he went to the University of Virginia, would you guys have gotten that? <laughs> no, no. I think the all time defense was better. What you mm. should have said was there was a really nice book about him and his brother in every <laughs> elementary school across America. <laughs> okay. Gentlemen, can you name me Cam Newton's top six receivers by career touchdowns that he threw Ooh, to them? That he threw to them. Yes. Top six. Okay. Well, Greg Olson. Greg Olson is actually not here. That's why I do not believe that. This is probably a wide receiver only list, then. Yeah. It's wide receiver only. My bad. Yeah. That cannot be true. So I, was, this is all... I was about to say that there's no uh, receivers to <laughs> so, again, I, I would, probably I, I, would there. Think, I would think McCaffrey would be there too. But if this is wide outs yeah, only, it's got to be receiver only, then I'd figure Steve yeah. Smith. Steve Smith, number four with 16. How many Popeyes, seasons Popeyes did they play together? Uh, they would have played three seasons together, I believe. Maybe okay. four. Um, did Ginn end up being on here? 
Again, is number two with 19. Uh, who could have been? Popeye's Biscuit, Kelvin Benjamin. Number three with 18. Wow. Oh, that's so sad. Come on, guys. I mean, I, I just, I, I got to throw him out. There's Brandon LaFell on here. Number five with 12. Oh, Spawn Power. Who is number one and a receiver? And we've guessed Steve Smith and Benjamin and Ted Yen. DJ Moore is not on this list. No. Is Devin Funches on here? I don't Funches think so. Funches scores but... in bunches. Number one. Oh, Devin oh, Funches is one? 22 I was thinking touchdowns. maybe he'd be six. So then we're looking for six. I, I mean, I could <laughs> run through Funches. the names like it, Jericho Cotchery. We'd all comes enjoy to it. Mind. Not, okay. not him. I mean, uh, Corey Brown, maybe. Uh, Touchdown. Corey Brown. Nice is that the done. same as Philly Brown, or is yes. that the same person? Yes, it's okay. Corey Philly Brown, yeah. He had seven. Nicely wow. done. I'm surprised he's that he Seven? That I'm surprised seven. he has that many. Yeah. Poor Cam. Not a lot Poor of Cam, man. man. Yeah, it's... Um, not a, I know not this a topic list. comes up comes up like once a month is like how bad Cam's receivers were and in the Stay Hot podcast land, but it it just is always mind blowing. It's it's always shocking to dude. think about it. That combined that with the Reggie Bonifan stat, um, the Panthers, the mid two thousand tens Panthers have uh, blown me away. This <laughs> stat you guys would probably get a kick out of. We were talking about Aaron Jones and and how AJ Dillon has prolonged his career, and then we were talking about Christian McCaffrey right after that. And I said, you know, McCaffrey never had a an, like an AJ Dillon to take the load off. So then we looked up who. This is a question, I guess, a bonus trivia question that's not on the thing. Who had the second most carries? What running back had the second most carries for the 2019 Panthers? And how many carries do you think that was? It's not Mike Tolbert, is it? Is that too late? Tolbert, Tolbert was gone by then, but yeah, it's not a bad Buffalo. guess. If you get this, I will be legitimately in, in shock and awe. I'll give you I'll give you a, a hint and maybe an even extra question. There are two players between McCaffrey and this guy who had more rushing attempts but weren't running backs. <laughs> Wow. Keep in mind, Cam Newton did not Curtis. Play yeah, I assume Curtis Samuel is one of those two guys mm-hmm. in between. Yeah. And then the other was the oh. starting quarterback for the 2019 Panthers, which is Mike, Kyle Allen. Yeah. Yes. So Curtis Samuel and Kyle Allen were ahead of the second running back in terms of carries. It's not like uh, Chupa Hubbard or something, man. Bree Chupa. Was a little bit later. Dude, I don't think I have a clue. Yeah, yeah I, it's. I... Do you want to give it or should I, Matt? You go for it. It's Reggie Bonifin, and he got 16 carries that entire year. Dude, that was the just... number two running back behind Christian McCaffrey. A testament to how insane that stat is, is that you said his name, said, oh, there's yeah, a I was crazy about to say, stat. I was like, so oh. we asked him the question and we still didn't get yes. it. <laughs> Did I say Bonifant? Yeah, yes. you said you said his name. I, thought I have probably, no oh. idea who that is. I've never heard of that guy. That's insane. Yes. And I, then we wonder why McCaffrey got hurt the next year. It's like, uh, wow. We had R- Reggie Bonifant backing him up. Anyway, I figured Dude. that you guys would appreciate that mm-hmm. random lore. I've never heard of that guy in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I also went on record. That was an all-time nerd sesh performance. Well done, Matt. That was sick, dude. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, the Panthers ones I can get. No no question. <laughs> that was still gnarly. Uh, one connection that uh, we all have is uh, ASU alum, so I'm going to need you guys to name me the top five Sun Devils with the most points in their NBA career. I like how you drafted Matt into that. That was very... Oh, no, Matt Matt was there in spirit, man. I also am not an alumni as I dropped out and did not get any kind of graduation until I put on your hat, Logan. But uh, <laughs> is Dort already there, even Ooh, though he's D- a defensive Dort's, guy? Dort's actually not a bad guess. He's 10th already. I think... Uh... 
obviously Harden is one. Yeah, uh, I assume the rest of the five will be Byron Scott, Fat Lever, Joe Caldwell. Are they all there? Yeah, dude, you're just missing number four. I mean, does this count ABA? I don't believe so. Let me let me confirm. Because Freddie Lewis, ABA legend, went to ASU, who I think would have put up top five scoring numbers. But other NBA guys. Lewis probably would be here, but they do not include ABA points. So Alton Lister is not going to be here. Alton Lister is number six, first guy off. Who's uh, the last one Carson, that we're missing? This is all you, Carson. I do not know my <laughs> ASU basketball lore. I got it. Don't worry, Theo. I'll I got Dort. I got uh, Z, Z, who was on Dylan the Panther. Cheatham. Yep, yep. There we go. But he's, I don't even yeah. know if he played in the NBA. Dude, the 28, team. 12 career points. Yeah, he's on the Pelicans. Okay. I know that I'm missing another. It's not Eddie House, is it? Eddie House, very close to being on this list. He's seven. So, uh, said Lever, said Harden, said Byron Scott. I didn't even know Byron Scott went to ASU, to be per perfectly honest with you guys. That guy's a mm -hmm. dog on 2K. Corner three, <laughs> Byron Scott. <laughs> Byron Scott was nice. He was nice. Do you have a hint for me here, Logan? Just an era, honestly. I think I'll get it. Okay. Um, era he was in. Oh, yeah. Hint. My hint to you was going to be uh, this guy actually went on to coach in the NBA. Uh, he was a head coach from 2009 to 2016. Okay. Interesting. Well, that's it all with the same team, or did he bounce around? Two different teams, but one was definitely more prominent than the other one. If I'm not mistaken, I want to say this guy might be the franchise's all time wins leader. Oh, wow. As a coach? Yeah. Damn. Is it Hurley? Well, no, he's the ASU coach. He never coached in the NBA. No. And he went I don't even know if he went to ASU. Oh, yes, he did go to Duke. I remember that. Okay. In a very, unfortunately, short NBA career. Right. Uh, I am just drawing a blank. I can just think about Jeff Pen Prendergraft and Ike Diagu. Who is this Yeah, guy? so this guy's, this guy's the franchise's all-time leader and wins. Okay. Oh my God! It's Lionel Hollins, of course. Man, good. What a clutch! It is Lionel Hollins. Jeez. Okay. Good question. Forks up, baby. Go Sun Devils. Lionel Hollins. Yeah, of course. A legend. Seventy-seven champ. All right, guys. I think this is a fun question. Frankly, I wish I was being asked this question, but we'll see how you guys <laughs> like it. Only two players in NBA history have been MVP runner-up multiple times, but never actually won an MVP award. Who are they? George Gervin, right? Oh, right off rip. Let's go. Yes. Okay. Good call, dude. Yeah. I don't know if I don't know if this is right. Chris Weber. No. A bit ambitious for C Webb. Gervin is honestly the tougher of the two. He did it back to back in 78 and 79. The other guy. Four-time MVP runner-up, never won. I mean, I the answer to this I thought a minute ago. Well, it would have been was Embiid, right? He was second place multiple times, he and was? he would have been on here. So exactly. that's the next name I go to. But uh, I believe he just won an MVP yeah. recently. I think yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> You're on Nerd Session. Who won the Who won the 2023 <laughs> NBA MVP? You are reading the paper. Oh. Right? That's exactly right. The three highest scores on the. 2023 Denver Nuggets. <laughs> place. Of course, it's Pistons legend Jerry Stackhouse. <laughs> um, I think this honestly tracks. This guy, off the top of my head, is, in my opinion, the best player to never win an MVP. Who 
best player to never win an MVP? Man. I feel like I know the answer to this, but I can't. Jason Kidd? To you. Write it down somewhere, Theo. It's not Kidd. I'm not confident that I'm right because I feel like you guys would have gotten this by now. Did but... Oscar Robinson ever get an MVP? I believe so, right? did win. Okay. 1964. Mm. It's got to be some sort of era where there maybe isn't like multiple like it'd be hard for it to be somebody from the 80s because being second place means you're over like larry or or, or magic and then jordan so it's just a lot of guys there true you guys have have a hint if you want it yeah, yeah i'll take the hint this guy came into the league the same year as oscar robertson Oh, in fact, they were the top not. two picks of the draft. Uh, Oscar I was Robinson think, I was thinking came about in Chris what, like, It's not Bob Cousy, is it? One. It's not Cousy. Avlicek? Mm-mm. A Pettit got him one. Um... I just don't know who, who was winning the MVPs back then. Like, I, I know some of the... It's a lot of Russell and Wilt. Yeah, it's a oh, lot is of it, Russell. Is it, is it Elgin Baylor? Not Elgin Baylor. Jerry West? Jerry West. I was I was thinking Jerry West, but I thought he was drafted before Oscar. Same class. They came in together. Yeah, 66, wow. 70, 71, and 72. Nicely done, gentlemen. Oh, definitely one of the most underrated all time, dude. He just had a tough go of it, man. Seriously, every step of the way, second place <laughs> didn't break his way, man. Yeah. Hey guys, uh, pretty simple one, pretty straightforward. Let's see if you can get it done. Can you name the four Packers quarterbacks to record over twenty thousand career passing yards and a hundred touchdowns? There's four. There's wow, four. I can. I can. I can name three. three. Uh, Star, Favre, and Rogers was. Mm hmm. Maj Majowski, yeah, Majorski, Majowski. Don Majowski is not a bad guess. The, I believe he is the Magic six. Man. The Magic First Man. First of all, Theo, can we see who you wrote down for the last question? I thought it was Chris Paul. I thought maybe oh, he was two-time runner-up, time runner up, mm -hmm. but I was like, they would have gotten Chris if he did it multiple times. Yeah, no, that was good thinking. Don Majowski, one of uh, one of six QBs to pass for ten thousand and fifty TDs. So it's got to be a, a pre-star throwback, right? Unless it's somebody. No. Knows. You know what is the most embarrassing thing about this is before we did this podcast, I brushed up on the Packers history. And I literally <laughs> looked, I literally wrote down, it's on my like pad of notes on my bed, who this is, is written down. Oh, but I'm boy. not going to look at it. I'm trying to remember what I wrote down this morning because I knew I'd be asked some <laughs> Packers all-time questions. Good thinking. And I'm I'm choking this away by not remembering my notes. The 80s Packers just weren't that good. I don't know why I'm saying 80s, but I feel like that's the window. Uh... I can't even think of it. I do not. Yeah, I, I don't even have a name I could throw yeah. out there. I, I I would have no clue. Yeah, there was some ter there was there was it was a big carousel for a long mm -hmm. long time. You had an old Whitehurst playing quarterback. I I don't know if he's related to clipboard Jesus Whitehurst. There's uh -huh. all sorts of names. Do we have a, a hint here, Logan, that we can cash in? I you know I, I thought I think both of you guys have a chance at getting this. I'm gonna try to come up with a good hint. I just because of Theo's well Packer knowledge and then. I've heard you say this guy's name before, Carson. Um, mm. I mean, this guy really isn't prominent in, in NFL history. He played for the Oilers as well. You guys are in the right era. Played with the Packers from 76 to 85. Um, played for the Oilers. Kind of a funny name. I don't, I don't really know how to, like, There's this guy's kind of not the yes. script. 
It's got a there funny is a name. name. There was a name that I wrote down that I was like, who is that? <laughs> That's someone I've never heard of before, and they have a goofy name. And I do not remember what the name is. I do not remember it. I, I don't know. Wait, let me check. I will sell you. I, I let it be known that I am checking my notes here, and then I'm going to <laughs> okay. say what it is. <laughs> to be clear, that's going to make. To be our fair, this is this is unacceptable. But I, we're not going to get it. <laughs> oh wait, I do. I erased the notes from my iPad to write <laughs> other notes about Kyle Hamilton, so I don't have it written down anymore. Who is it? <laughs> it's Lynn Dickey, guys. Oh, I should know Lynn Dickey. I was thinking of a different horse. I should have known Lynn Dickey. That's my fault, everybody. That's no, also my fault. Well, there's another random ass name who's like maybe fifth or sixth on Tobin, the Packers. Is it Tobin Rope? Yep, Tobin, oh. Tobin Rope or what? Or Rote. Tobin Rote. I was like, who is that? Um, Lynn Dickey, I should have known. And he's even got a name because it's got Dick in it, you know. That he's even got a name. out to me. <laughs> okay, guys. The Cleveland Browns went one in thirty-one between the twenty fifteen and sixteen seasons. Can you name every quarterback to start? Oh my a god, game? you're diabolical! Yes, you're diabolical. I I think I got I think I got a puncher's chance at this because I'm friends with Bladen. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, Kaiser is the first guy that comes to mind. Yep. Kaiser would have been in the second year. Because Correct. they went one and fifteen, and then went zero and sixteen, which is why it's so funny. Yeah. Um, Charlie Whitehurst is probably on this. Whitehurst is actually that is. Let me let me let me cash out. Is it three other QBs? Is it? Or are there just three more? What the? Oh, I thought you were like trying to clarify the position. There's four more, and also I said fifteen, sixteen. I meant sixteen, seventeen. Fifteen, it's... they were a stellar three and thirteen. It's got to be McCown, Griffin, and Kessler, ain't it? Those are all right. Now the toughest one left is the guy who only started one game, and uh, that was in the 0-16 season, the only one that Kaiser did not start. Oh, uh, 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 Kevin Hogan. Bingo. Nice. Nicely done, fellas. Nice. All right. Okay. Team Paul George retakes the lead in more prominent fashion than good Browns or you know those Browns quarterbacks. Can you guys name every NBA player to make all defense ten or more times? Yeah. So Duncan fifteen. Carson's <laughs> uh, like, yeah, okay. He's backpacking. <laughs> He's backpacking. Team hot nerds here. We've got Kobe. We've got Kareem. Right. Two to go. Who did I just have in my head that I know is right? Ooh, that's really frustrating. Because I'm thinking Jordan is nine. Mm -mm. Oh, KG. Boom, 12, one to right? go. Yep. Is it Ben Wallace? Wallace? Not Ben Wallace. Or did he play that long? Is it some piston from those? Like, I feel like the Pistons have always had defensive Star Wars. Pistons it's have had tough. dogs. It's not uh, anybody from Detroit. Wallace's okay. uh, Wallace's peak was just a little shorter because he short, was, right? Yeah, I'm was thinking, undrafted. I want to say GP is is nine times. That's a good guess. It's a really good guess. Let's see, LeBron is six. That's criminal. So true. But somebody perked right up when you said that. <laughs> Uh, Spawnover, how do you come down on the 2013 Defensive Player of the Year race? Yeah, what's your take? My opinion on it is that the gap between like being actually winning the Depoy Award and then being like the second or third best defender in a, in a given year at your peak is probably not that big, but Gasol probably deserved it more. And I, I think that's typically take. true of like all centers. Send, like yeah. if we're talking about like most valuable defensive player, where do you guys come out on uh, Marcus Smart winning a defensive player of the year? Not I a big hate fan. that. By the yeah. way, I think I have this. Is it Scotty? It's Scotty. That's all. Oh, know. yeah. No, Marcus. I could have got Scotty. <laughs> I do think LeBron deserved more all defensive teams than he got, though. Yeah, I saw the Twitter discourse today on if Kobe or LeBron was a better defender, and I'm just like, man, guys, let's. Sometimes in basketball discourse, there is quite literally no objectivity. People can say whatever they want. I mean, it just want. 
Like, no, no, uh, yeah, I agree. Like, all defensive teams are going to be such a hard one to go. Like, no one's even Terrible. pulling up another, just kind of talking. Here's what, here's what really bothers me about that, though. They aren't even really the same award. If you're a guard and a forward, you're not even going for the same thing. Yeah. You're in totally different categories. So even yeah. if Kobe has more, like getting them against guards is a lot different than getting them against forwards, especially when it's like Duncan or something is a forward mm-hmm. or like Garnett yeah. being a four and he's a forward. So yeah. I think that's a pretty fruitless debate. And nothing is more reputation based than all oh, defense yeah. awards, like especially back in the day. Good God. Okay. Fellas, just two more questions here. We'll see if anybody can separate. Nikola Jokic this year became just the sixth player ever to average 25 points per game while shooting 45% from three in a playoff run. That's with a minimum of 10 games and one three per game. Who are the other five? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Sure can. Jokic this year became the sixth player to average 25 points per game while shooting 45% from three in a playoff run. And just to eliminate some flukes, we have minimum of 10 games and one three-point attempt per game. Has Steph Curry done it? Steph actually has not. Fraud. <laughs> <laughs> Man, KD. Steph? 45% from three. Steph shot 42% in 2017. That's his best. Is is one of twenty five points in? KD is not here. KD is so close though. That surprises me. Multiple times actually. Did Reggie Miller ever do it? Not Reggie Miller. James Harden. No, Harden's Dude. three balls. And there's five of up. these guys who have gotten twenty five and forty five percent from three. Yeah, you know I almost. I'm trying to think of maybe like shortened lined time. It's, it's like interesting. If there's, if there's anybody who's gotten it there. Like, it, did Jordan ever do it with a short line and very few attempts? That is honestly pretty good thinking, but there's actually nobody from the shortened three point line okay. era. MJ Mitchell. No, Ooh. that's that's also good thinking though. Jamal Murray. Oh, yeah. Jamal I was about to Murray say. in the bubble. Yep. Ray Allen. 2001 Ray Allen, baby. The conference finals run. D- Dame? Yeah, Dame has that's never done I was going to guess. Wow. Not even in that Nuggets series when they had like 55 points and it went to overtime and he was just Well, it. so he shot almost 45% that year, but mm. he was eliminated in the first round. So, Oh, oh right, 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 right. Got to have... Bird. No, not Bird. All of these guys are uh, yeah, I'm since thinking 2010. They're... What about uh, Kyrie or Isaiah Thomas? Nope. Wow, I thought those were good guesses, man. I Those are good guesses. Um... Did Dirk ever do it? Dirk, 2011. Good call. Nicely done. Let's see, Kyrie, man, that's a really good guess. I can't, I can't believe that some of these guys haven't. Forty-four percent in the 2016 <laughs> title Dang. run when he did average 25 a game. Have we already guessed Clay? Clay has not done this. That's that's what makes a trick. You got to get up to 25 yeah. points. It's right. Like I almost guessed Chris Paul, but I just don't know if he quite gets up there, man. Oh, this is kind not of a stinky easy. guess. Brad Bradley Beal. No. Okay. Yeah. Better, I don't, better than yeah. than Bradley Beal. One of these was very recent. Like this year? Oh, I'm not allowed to say like... something like that. There's just some guesses I want to throw out there. The problem is, is what makes this difficult is is the one attempt. And like, These there's guys so are many both guys. Legit. They're both okay. legit marksmen from deep. Okay. I didn't want any like, oh well, Jimmy Butler this one year no. shot like a one attempt a game and he played ten and he made like five of them. It's like okay. No. These guys, uh, both up around five threes a game. 
Oh man, that's good volume too. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Did Luca ever do it? I, I don't think he's that efficient. I just throw the uh, name out. Luca, that's a good thought. You know, he might have done that in one of what about the what about series. what about Jalen Brunson? Not Brunson. Did he, did he quite get up there now? It's um Yeah, who are we missing from this year, dude? That is messing with me. Um Devin Booker? Book. Ooh, there you course. go. Okay. And the last guy was in the midst of a really great run and then got hurt. Since 2010, Kawhi. really great run. Oh, yeah. 2017, Kawhi. Oh, Kawhi. Let's go, dude. Kawhi and Booker, we should have got a little bit sooner. But, but hey, I think, hey, I think got that's there. pretty good. That's a tough question, man. There's a lot. I, I'm really shocked Dame and Curry weren't up there, man. Yeah, Steph not being there is. But you think about the fact that he's going so damn deep in the playoffs every year. It's tough to sustain 45%. Right, like right. And then you're that. shooting so many of them, too. Those guys take yeah. such difficult threes. It's like yeah. hitting the 45% is just not going to happen. Yeah. yeah excuses, you know, excuses. Yeah, Theo is right. He's fraudulent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, gentlemen, those guys performed on the biggest stage. These gentlemen performed when they broke onto the scene. Can you guys name the top five players? with the most sacks in their first five seasons? That's My a good first, question. Well, I don't know about first five. My first thoughts are Alden Smith and Vaughn Miller because of how immediately electric they were. Are Dogs. either of them here? They are not here. Uh, I, I, I love that guess, though. I'll go with just some of the sack leader, leaders. Reggie White, uh, Bruce Smith. Reggie White is number one. Bruce Smith is a good guess. He is I think, uh, top 15. I mean, J.J., outside of his rookie years, yeah, 20 sacks a year. Is he... J.J. Watt is number two. And is T.J. here? T.J.'s number three. Wow. Yeah, put some spec on T.J.'s name, man. The greatest edge rusher of all time. He said what? Yeah, I said it. I stand on it, too. <laughs> he is Yo. good. T.J.'s unblockable, dude. He single-handedly won the Steelers, like, seven games last year. How many years ha has... Um... Miles Garrett played now. Is he up I was there? Thinking Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett is a really good guess. He's right behind Aaron Donald. What about uh Strahan? Is he here? Strahan's a good guess too, and I want to give you guys credit. Von Miller, uh top ten on this list. I'm just thinking about the all-time sack leaders like Kevin Green, Chris yeah, Woolman. These guys are uh definitely up there. Um uh julius peppers good guess he's top 25 okay what's really the number guess, the yeah. number uh to get here you got two guys tied for fifth it's 64.5 and then a guy is 66 okay khalil mack wouldn't have been there right khalil mack very high on this list too dude these are good guesses he's right behind peppers actually okay why am i thinking about robert mathis Could I be? It's a good thought. Uh, <laughs> you had a bit of a grin on your uh, face when I said that, Logan. I don't know where uh, Robert Mathis is not uh, top fifty. Stupid, stupid hobbits. It's uh, too bad Nick Bosa got hurt and also has only played four years. Otherwise, he'd be on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So you guys got to have one throwback from the '80s, but the next two guys are like '90 is, and on. Is Gastineau here? Gastineau is such a good guess, dude. Yeah. I was watching Mark Gastineau highlights like four days ago because I was like, what a good edge rusher that I know absolutely nothing about. And then I watched the highlights and I still continue to know nothing about him because <laughs> it just showed him tackling the quarterback. And it's like, well, how did he get there? Um, who else was around that era? Gastineau is actually the first guy off on EBS credit. That's an mm. elite guess. That's a really good guess, Carson. Yeah. Man. Man. So we still have two to go, yeah? Uh yeah. One of these guys very modern uh debuted, I believe, in 2004, 2005. That made me think about well, it's not Mario. Not Mario. 2006. Better than Mario impossible nobody was better than mario williams i'm thinking 
maybe like a Viking Alan Page or John Randall. Oh. oh, what about another Viking, Jared Allen? Oh my gosh, dude, you guys are easy a tremendous guess. Is Allen the closest one off right behind Miles Garrett? And I don't know if Alan Page qualifies because he was so early. Uh, oh, you know, sure. I don't know if they have his tracking, uh, his actual mm. tracking numbers. Dude, when Shout you out. said vikings and then you had said came in around mm -hmm. 2004 i thought it had to be jared allen it's another guy who allen is, also is very prolific allen is super underrated all time yeah. so everyone has forgotten about him but watching mm -hmm. him play the packers twice like he was crazy he was sick um was allen drafted too man i remember reading his scattering report out of fourth round yeah, he was fourth round. He was like a long snapper. He was lanky. He was too skinny. He was like wow. a Greg Rousseau body type, like kind of just long and lanky. And people didn't really think there was much there. And then, um, yeah, he was just incredible. Okay. So you said 80s. Are we missing the most obvious answer of all time? Is it Lawrence Taylor? Lawrence Taylor, one of the first guys off. He is Dude. top 10. Ooh. I can do you guys do you guys want to burn your hint? I got I got uh, yeah let's burn the you. hint let's burn the hint we might have thrown the towel soon we've been on this one for a minute okay so one of the both of these guys okay one of these guys has a significant sack record uh I don't want to tell you what exactly because I feel Derek like that Thomas might be, it's Derek Thomas number four the other gentleman led the league in sacks I believe multiple times oh my god is it uh the guy who you loved, what's uh, it's not Sean Merriman, is it? Oh, oh man, I did love Sean Merriman, dude. Sean Merriman was a beast. It's not it, Sean Merriman. It's not uh. It's got to be before Sean Merriman. Uh, it kind of kind of a is crossover. It, he did he did debut before Merriman though. It's not. What's that guy's name? I, I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking about an edge for the Buccaneers right now. Um. Hmm whose name I can't quite remember. It's not Warren Sapp. Who are you thinking about Derek Brooks? No, I'm not thinking of Derek Brooks. Simeon Rice, of... maybe? Oh, Simeon Rice. That's Scott. Is that not it? Theo's thinking of some other guy. I feel like he had a two-part last name, but I don't know. Ricky John Francois. Jason Pierre Paul. <laughs> uh, not quite No, that. what's the name of the guy? It's not Curse, is it? Dorio? Oh, it's Dorio Green Beckham. <laughs> um no Javon Curse is a good guess he uh the freak had what like 14 sacks his rookie year yeah, yeah that's a really year. good guess that's a very very good guess no this guy man he's one of the greatest edge rushers of this decade Carson I always forget him I always forget him anytime we do a sack video for some reason okay. I just like the 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 they just don't fire in my head when I when I think about great edge rushers and then the other guy I mean it's not I guess I have to guess him because I said Mathis. It's not Dwight Freeney, is it? Not Dwight Freeney. He's very high up here. There's also another guy tied for fifth, I believe. Let me confirm. I think it was a Super Bowl MVP unless I'm tripping. Whoa. Well, that's a massive hint. Was he? But a... I don't think that can be right. No, I okay. Maybe, maybe I made that up. <laughs> I don't know. For I don't know either. Sake, should we give in here? I mean, we've been on this for like what? Five I think minutes so. Plus? I think we gotta. I think we've gotta give. The I, we've thrown out so. like twenty. Yes, I think for honor's sake, we give in. Guys, it's Demarcus Ware. Oh. And Dexter Manley. That was extremely gettable. That hurts. Yeah, that hurts. Well, you guys have a chance to clinch it here, and and I I, th I think you're gonna do it. But, uh, wow, that is a painful one. Okay. Only one player in NFL history has gone first overall, one offensive rookie of the year, and one MVP. Who is it? That would be Cam Newton. It's Cam Newton. No! Done. All right. Oh All right. As he builds his goat case. What's, what's our last question <laughs> for okay. uh, uh, fun's sake? This was my uh, one of my favorite styles of questions to ask uh, during uh, the old trivia time, and it was just me and you had to head Carson. Uh, Theo, I don't know how much help you're going to be on this one. Uh, I want you to give it your best shot. Uh, Moses Malone averaged 20 oh. points per game for 11 straight seasons. 
Can you name the six players who averaged 20 or more points per game alongside him? Oh, this is a sick activity. It is a okay. sick activity. Dr. Alongside J. him as in on the team? Or... Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, it's over for me if Dr. J is already on the board. <laughs> Sorry, I should have saved that one for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm give me thinking. the easy ones. Do some We're charity, gonna... please. Andrew Tony. Yeah, good poll. Calvin Murphy. Boom. God other guys in houston oh there's actually I, nobody else in houston yeah because no rudy t okay so how many more people are on this list period you've got three to go, three um, to go. and i believe all with different franchises that's really interesting so it's do we have Jeff Malone in Washington. Oh my, you're absurd, dude. You're absurd. Yeah, Jeff oh. Malone's on this list. By far the toughest one to get. I mean, it's cake from here, dude. This is going to be what we call a moral victory. <laughs> uh, uh, me and Matt captured what you call an actual victory. Yeah, <laughs> congrats on that. And it's all because of the deductive reasoning to figure out that Bibbles Bowell was the correct <laughs> answer. <laughs> That's the separator here. Okay, you're saying it's cake, but I'm trying to think. Unless I'm I'm dumb, I think there's one really easy one you're missing. Really, I'm trying to think. I think so. Oh, Charles mm -hmm. Barkley, duh. Chuck, and you've got one more. I don't know if you remember Moses being on this franchise, but an all-time scorer here as well. That's what I'm trying to think about. Moses He's played so many places. Oh man, dude, I'm looking at his um. At his his basketball yeah. reference now, it's, it's ridiculous. Is it uh, is it in Atlanta with Neek? It is Neek. Well done. Come man. on. All right, ends it on a high note there, for me emotionally. Theo, we couldn't tight quite take the win. The uh, yeah. hot nerd fall just short. I, guess I can't Paul believe George I choked. The, <laughs> I guess Paul I choked George to let Dick Dickie away. Ever track is. Yeah, missing missing Lynn Dickey is my blown twenty seven to zero <laughs> playoff lead. Dude, we were on the verge of both of our misses. We had just one to go in the category, and we couldn't clutch up. But it was written in the stars, man. PG's the goat. Brandon Miller said it himself, and we were never going to beat a team bearing his name. No, no. All right. Well, thank you guys. This was a ton of fun. Uh, you guys rock. Everybody can find all your stuff. As we said on TikTok, Theo Ash NFL, you're just Matthew Spawnauer, right? Mm -hmm. On the talk. Go listen to the Stay Out podcast. They do it with Bladen Kirk. It's fantastic. And go support all their stuff. And you can support all of our stuff. You can buy our merch. Logan and I are both repping it. Despite being on opposite teams, we wear the same jersey. So you can buy that on thevolume.com. You can get hats. You can get shirts. Check all that stuff out. You can get the flags behind us. You can follow us across social, Instagram, TikTok, at Nerd Sesh, Twitter, at Nerd underscore Sesh. As always, if you enjoyed and you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the volume page. And you can also find the podcast in all of its audio versions on any platform there. So thank you very much to you guys for coming on. Thank you to everybody who listened. Thanks any last words? Us. Yeah, thanks for having us, man. I don't know why I, I just said want to say. I just want to say that you're... Um, uh greg odin rap was thank you man we'll stick will stick with me till the day i die <laughs> thank you and man that's, that's what i'll always remember about this podcast yeah i appreciate that i wish i had the full lyrics in front of me but we were able to get to most of it so with that as always i have been carson brabber i've been logan gandon and this was nerd sesh